Well, hello everybody and welcome back to G-Bear Homesteading the Desert here on September 8th, 2018. And what you're looking at here is I got a little bored today so I started adding some plumbing in here. And uh, I ran my lines over. I didn't have the T's to make the connection. There'll be a T. Uh, this will get cut off and this will get cut off and this will get cut off and then a T goes in there. That's the cold water line. As you can see, I wrote cold on all my lines. So later on, if I ever go inside the wall and I see the, the, the line, I go, well, I wonder if that's hot water or cold water? Well, I'll know. So the cold water runs over down to the toilet and I've got my stub out there and I did solder it. I got everything all put together. So um, everything down low is soldered. The only thing is I'm still missing the pipe to go up to the top here. I still swear I've got a bucket somewhere inside the container that I brought up with a bunch of short pieces of pipe in it. And I think I've got a couple of three footers in there. I've got to go in there and dig them out and see if I can find them. But uh, it was 106 on the porch today. And uh, it was a little hot inside the container. I went in there looking for some things and I did find some stuff. I got uh, a receptacle for there and there. And uh, over here, I've got uh, my single pole switch for the outdoor light. And excuse me, I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> excuse me. And um, I got a GFI hung here. That's not where it goes. It'll be uh, down here. And I'll go into that in a little while because I had a question from one of my subscribers uh, they wanted me to uh, do a little coverage on GFIs so I'll, I'll get into that in a minute um, found a receptacle for down there and I found a three-way switch for over there and I'll get into three-way switches and uh, how those work also um, and uh, the, the stack switches uh, I'll get into that and g give you a little bit of load down, down on those I found a receptacle for over there, and I still have two inside the wall there. So those would be my two outdoors. One is going to be over in this area so that I can plug my washer in, and the other one will be over there on the outside so I can plug my um, electrical in if I am doing some work out in that area. And I just thought about, well, why not? I'll add another receptacle right about here on the outside coming off the air conditioner. Um, I'll probably never use those two together uh, because it'll be too much, but uh, too much draw, even though that's gonna be on a 20 amp unit, that air conditioner probably is gonna, on startup would probably take about 16 amp just for a startup, but then, then it drops and runs lower than that, probably eight or 10 amps. But uh, I'll never use the two together. I'll hardly ever use the air conditioner. I'm just gonna put that out there just if I have to do some work on this area. Uh, you know what? I just thought, what am I doing that for? I'll have the, uh, the duplex over here for the washer. I can use that. I'm only gonna have one thing plugged in there. I'll, I don't need a mechanical dryer. Um, my mechanical dryer is right there. It has two pulleys and a hand that moves it back and forth. That's the best mechanical dryer out there. All right, so let's get into some of the other stuff here. Okay, GFIs. I was asked about hooking up a GFI. If you have to run a separate circuit uh, from the panel just for a GFI. No, you do not. On the back side here, you'll see right there it says line. And then this side that's covered with the tape is load. All right, the way it works is you take any um, powered outlet that's powered directly from the panel and you connect into the line side here. Now you notice there's four um, locations for four connections. Okay, silver screw is always the white wire Brass screw is always the black wire or the hot wire. Okay, just remember silver is white. And you, if you forget about that, you can always look down here. It says hot wire right there, that's this side, and white wire this side. The reason they say hot wire and not black is because um, you can use different colored wires in AC uh, electricity. 
Some people use orange and green, uh, not green, but orange and blue and yellow and things like that for, to uh, show different circuits. Well, most of the time it's black and white is what you're gonna see in, in your outlets and things like that. But you can see other colors. So they just say hot wire because that could be any color. And the reason I stopped myself when I said green is because green always depicts ground in AC voltage. Okay, so when you got alternating current, it's gonna be uh, white is neutral and green is ground or bare. It has no insulation on it. It's a, that's a ground wire. All right, now when you bring your hot wire and your neutral and then your ground connects down here on the bottom on the green screw, like I said, green is always ground, okay? That sets up your GFI to work for where, that location where you're at. Now, some people in a bathroom will have more than one outlet. So I'll have two outlets, so one on each side of the sink or whatever, and they have a larger bathroom with a, a double vanity. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have this at, at the first incoming box. And then you come off the load side with a black and a white and a ground and you run over to the next box and you just put a regular outlet like that one in. Okay, now that's what's happened here. The GFI like this is inside the kitchen on the other side of that wall right there behind the bathtub. And that's where my um, countertop is by, beside the right hand side of my sink. And then I come around the corner and there's another outlet there that's just a plain outlet like this, but it's running off the load side of the GFI. So both of those outlets now are GFI protected. Now the reason you got extra connectors up here is if you wanted to carry the, the current coming from the panel, uh, which is straight hot, not GFI protected until it goes through this box. Okay, you would hook your hots into here and then you would pull another line off of there and run that to your other outlet that doesn't have to be GFI protected. And that just carries the hot wire to the next location. So even if the GFI is popped, you'll have no power at this location, but you'll still have power at the next outlet in the bedroom or whatever. All right. It's pretty simple. If you have any more questions about that, uh, feel free to post them below and uh, I'll be glad to answer them. All right, stack switches. You notice that there's a black screw on this side. When you see a black screw on a, on a switch unit, that's the common side. So that's where your hot wire goes. And that, of course, black, it would be the black on here. Now don't get confused because you got gold on this side because you're not gonna have any white screws on a switch because you don't have to connect a neutral onto your switch. All a switch does, this black screw would be the hot wire coming in and then this gold screw would be the hot wire going out to whatever it's controlling, a light or a fan or whatever. So when you flip a switch to the on position where it says on there, all it does is connect those two screws together and let the electricity flow through to your, your hot line to your circuit. When you flip it off, it breaks those two apart so that there's no current flow across that wire. So whatever was supposed to be powered has no power going to it. That's all a switch does. Now, the reason they give you two black screws on here is because this little tab right here in the center can be broken out and then you can have two separate circuits coming in here. You have a hot wire coming in here and a hot wire going out, or you'll have a hot wire coming in here and a hot wire going out. The way I'm gonna have it is I'm gonna have just one hot wire coming in and then two hot wires going out, depending on which one I flip. So I'll leave the tab in place. I won't break it out. All right, we covered that. Next online, three-way switches. You have to have two alike. You have two three-way switches that are exactly alike. You have a black screw. I'm sorry there's paint on this one because I use it temporarily in a circuit. 
Um, it's a, still a brand new switch. It hasn't really been utilized. I just used it to um, cover the wires in the box while painting. All right, black is your common. Okay, and it says right there on the bottom of the unit, common. So that you could plug a wire into the back of there because in residential, they allow you to use THHN solid 14 for lighting circuits. I still like to use 12 anyway. I will be using 14 stranded for my lighting because I'm using all DC lighting, all 12 volt DC. Okay, so the way you would hook up a three-way switch. The easiest way is if you had a box in the ceiling where your light's going, is you bring your power up there. So you have a hot and a neutral up there in that box. Then you have a three-way switch in two different locations, one on this end of the hallway, one on this end of the hallway. And you'd have three wires to connect inside of there. So I'm gonna be using what they call SO cord, which is basically extension cord. That'll have a black, a white, and a green. Okay, so I'll slip a piece of um, uh, <coughs> shrink tube over the green and I'll turn it to red. So I, now I have black, red, and green. Okay, I mean black, red, and white. Because I don't want anybody to confuse the green as a ground. I'm going to be using, sending power through that. And the only thing you have to remember when you're connecting three ways is in this box and in this box, you're going to have the same three colored wires coming in and you're going to have two of the same switches. So the blacks go on the black screw. And then you have another screw on the same side of the switch as the black. So you would put your red down there if you wanted, or you, you could put your, um, your white, it doesn't matter. So just put the black and the red, I usually put them on the same side so I know when I go to the next switch, black and red go on the same side. And the third wire, whatever color it is, would go on the, the third uh, screw right there. All right, so you have that same connection in this box. You hook up the same thing, black on the black screw, red, and then it'll be my white would be down here. So you, you have the same exact wires connections on that switch as you do on that switch when you're doing a three-way. All right, up inside the, the junction box that would be on the, on the ceiling for your lighting. You already have your hot and your neutral coming in, all right? So your neutral is gonna tie to your, your lights, um, the, the light bulb fixture will have a black and a white wire on it. So you would tie the white two whites together, the white hot white coming in to the to the light bulb itself. Then the black up there, <clears throat> remember you're gonna have three wires coming out of this box up to there and three wires coming out of the other box coming up to here with the same colors. They would have black, red, and white. So you're gonna tie the two reds together. You're gonna to tie the two whites together. Now you have two blacks there plus one black from the hot wire left, there's three blacks. So you're gonna take one of, the hot, one of the blacks that is coming up there and tie it to the hot black. Now the other black that's left over, you only have one left over now, that ties to the light fixture black. Okay, I hope that was clear enough. It's that simple. Now when you power up your, your, your power to the light and you flip your three-way switch on either location. You flip this one up, the light comes on. You flip that one down, the light goes off. You flip this one up, the light goes on, or, or this one down, um, vice versa. Every time you go from one switch to the other and you flip it the opposite direction, the light either comes on or goes off. That's why you have three-way switches. Very simple. If you have any questions on that, again, post it in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you like my videos. All right, last thing I'm gonna cover here quickly before I close this off and post it, light bulbs. All right, I did mention that I have a, um, not all LEDs are created equal, and that includes GEs. This is a GE Reveal LED. This is a 120 volt, 40 watt uh, equivalent, uses only six watts. 
Okay, this one will not work on DC voltage, even though it's a GE. So you have to buy the regular incandescent shaped bulbs and take buy one at a time in GE, bring it back and test it, make sure that it'll work with your DC voltage. All right, this is a DC bulb. This is the one that comes with the old 45 watt solar panel set from Harbor Freight. This is 12 volt DC, five watts. Okay, this is a CFL bulb. I don't like CFL bulbs because they contain mercury, but these work pretty good and they're covered with that extra plastic cover. So if they fall, the, back, the, the plastic cover breaks and, and not the, the bulbs inside. And they don't give off a lot of light. All right, this is a, an LED 12 volt bulb. And this I bought online on eBay. It comes from China. And th the problem with these is they don't put off a heck of a lot of light and the LEDs burn out on them very quickly. They, uh, they're supposed to last like uh, 12, 13 years, but I've had half the, the LEDs burn out on these things in less than six months. And then they were only putting off half the light they should. Now, these are the new LEDs. These are 12 volt DC. And these are the ones that come with the new 100 watt um, solar panels from Harbor Freight. You get two with each set of Har um, Harbor Freight panels along with the controller and four 25 watt panels. And then you get some extra wires in there and that stuff. These are great. These things put out a lot of light. Um, they don't have anything printed on them, so I'm not going to take it, unscrew it, and show you anything about that. I just wanted to cover those very quickly. Again, remember, not all LEDs are created equal, and that includes the GEs. The GE is the only ones that I found in the incandescent shapes like this that's worked with DC voltage. I haven't found any of the others or any of the odd brands that work. So if anybody out there tries them and they find one that works with DC voltage, let me, let me know and I'll post it. I'll let other people know too. All right, that's about all I can cover on that. The other thing was people are confused when they talk about volts, amps, and watts. All right, very simple mathematical um, equation will tell you how many watts will run um, and how many amps it'll take and how many volts. Very simple equation. Volts times amps equals watts. Okay? So if you have something that says that it takes, uh, let's say, 1,200 watts, if you divide your voltage into that, which say you're running it on 120 volts AC. So you got 1200 watts divided by 120 volts equals 10. The 10 is the amps that's gonna be drawn when you turn that item on. So a 1200 watt unit at 120 volts will use 10 amps. And you can revert that. So if you take the wattage and you divide that by the amps. So say you have something that has a label on it, it says it's 1200 watts, 10 amps. Well, you wanna know what the voltage uh, requirement on that is? The 120 volts. You can use that same sequence in your 12 volt sequence. So if you have 1200 watts and you're gonna run it at 12 volts, 12 goes into 1200, 100 times, so you need 100 amps DC to run that unit. All right, very simple and a, and a good analogy of how that volts, amps, and resistance.